Hurricane Aaron is strengthening and about to bring a close call to the USA. Could there be a bigger threat on the way to the eastern US next week though? This video will provide the latest on Aaron and the next possible threat. Plus, we'll talk about what's going on with the weather across the general USA. Before I jump into anything else, I do want to start this video with a look at the latest on our current Hurricane Aaron. Let's start that discussion with a look at the brand new track line and cone of uncertainty issued for Hurricane Aaron as of our Friday evening. Just as expected in my last video yesterday, this storm has strengthened into a Category 1 hurricane as we've gone into the Friday time frame. As of the time of this update, we have a 75 mile per hour sustained wind field in this storm that is of low end Category 1 strength. While Aaron passes just north of the Caribbean and its southern bands skirt the islands with heavy rain and gusty winds, it is going to be entering warmer waters. That means that we're quickly going to see intensification through Category 2 strength all models and then this official guidance are indicating that we will likely have a category three storm at some point over the back end of this weekend. This is Sunday morning at 2 a.m. where the National Hurricane Center is anticipating a category three hurricane with 120 mile per hour winds. The storm is then set to begin curving to the north on the west side of an Atlantic high pressure system. As it does that, it could very well be a strong category four storm with at times sustained winds exceeding 145 miles per hour. Although the hype has continued and there's been a lot of speculation that this storm could brush the eastern United States, you can see on this cone that it already begins a northeastward shift. That indicates some pretty good confidence that this storm will thread the needle between the USA and Bermuda into next week. Bermuda will get some east side impacts on this storm as it will likely be a category four at least while passing west of the islands. That's going to be sometime around Wednesday. That is just at the beginning of the curve where this storm will eventually also start to lose some strength. The latest computer model spaghetti plots on Aaron clearly indicate a consensus that this storm, again, will thread the needle between the USA and Bermuda, with, if anything, a trend a little bit closer to Bermuda that's happened over the last day or so. There is one lonely model in this sea of dozens that carries a storm towards the Carolina coast. That is a very rogue scenario and very unlikely given the increased confidence in jet stream energy pushing this thing away from the east coast of the USA. That's why I've been saying in the last couple of videos that the clickbait is unnecessary if you're seeing it on other pages online. While Aaron could bring some high surf rip currents and some gusty winds to the eastern US, the next threat? Yeah, that's the one that I think could end up being more concerning if it materializes. You can already see that possible next threat starting to make its way off of the coast of Africa on this infrared satellite imagery from the end of our Friday. Let's now jump over to my handy dandy ensemble graphic that I like to use. This will track out where individual model members that run into this system show this storm being in the coming days. As we go through the near term, the only lowest pressure plots you see out of the individual model members that run into this ensemble are with Aaron moving northwest of the Caribbean and then curling to the north and east eventually as it passes by the eastern U.S. and Bermuda. Look at what happens within this graphic though as we get towards the midpoint of next week, specifically out of Wednesday into Thursday. A few of the model members that go into this GFS ensemble system start showing some weaker areas of low pressure making their way westbound across parts of the main development region of the Atlantic. Each of those individual plots that I just hashed out does not indicate a different tropical system. This is all part of one signal, and these are the individual scenarios of lowest pressure that some of these models are already showing up with uh, by the time we go towards Thursday. We get even more of the models that go into this larger scale piece of ensemble data starting to show lower pressure occurring by the time we go out of Thursday and then towards Friday and Saturday. Look at this, by Saturday, August 23rd, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the GFS ensemble members now showing some form or fashion of a low pressure moving west across the Atlantic. That isn't actually a huge percentage of the model members that necessarily go into this ensemble system, but it's a decent signal for this far out, and we see that signal grow as we go through the rest of that weekend and into the following week. This is around the morning time frame of Monday, August 25th. We've got several members still rolling west with some form or fashion of a tropical storm or hurricane signal here. Yes, it's a long way out, but we've got several individual members showing some form or fashion of a low pressure system near 980 to 1000 millibars moving northwest still. 
that would be uh, something of a tropical storm to low end hurricane caliber possibly passing the northern part of the Caribbean or the southwestern part of the main Atlantic basin. With time, I don't want to focus too much on these individual solutions and where they carry the storm from there, but you can definitely see the models uh, that still show the storm existing into the Wednesday, August 27th timeframe have it beginning to curl towards the USA. That's why it's worth bringing up the signal. It's just way too far out to say anything much more than what I'm saying here just yet. One thing worth adding, though, is that even if Aaron depletes some of the ocean heat content that we've had over the course of this week through August 13th, August 14th, August 15th, ocean temperatures have been around 30 Celsius. That's near 90 Fahrenheit or a little bit less. I'm expecting them to stay around that number because we're in the peak of the summer right now especially if that next possible storm stays a bit south of Aaron's track, it will be working through some pretty much untapped, very hot water. And hot water is very good at fueling tropical cyclones. That brings me to the end of this tropical discussion for now. Let's recap the big headlines that I just discussed about our two tropical concerns. Number one, Hurricane Aaron will be a close call, but actually it's not a big concern now. The only way that storm becomes concerning is if you put yourself in a life-threatening danger by getting in the ocean, particularly from the southeast up to the mid-Atlantic and the northeast coastlines. That's where high surf and rip currents will be big concerns. There will be gusty wind along a lot of that coastline as well as we go from especially Tuesday and Wednesday on. On. The next tropical wave could prove to be the bigger problem, but that's a big if, and it has a lot of ands and buts too. Some models indicate a new hurricane risk out of that 7 to 10 days out, but the USA impact risk is unknown due to low predictability with that storm, so that's why you gotta stay tuned for no hype updates right here on this channel. Before I discuss the general USA weather pattern that is ongoing right now, here's a quick reminder that the maps I use in my videos are often from Weatherbell. Check out their free trial link below. Also down below, consider hitting that like button so that this video gets more support in the algorithm. You can also support it directly by sharing it with other people who you think might find it useful. With that being said, let's turn our attention now to a quick look at the precipitation and storm pattern ongoing over the USA for the next few days. As we push out this blended guidance from our Friday when I'm recording this and into Saturday, August 16th, you can see that we will be watching some storms near the southeast US along an old lingering boundary. We're going to have some storms that also fire up, especially through the late afternoon and evening, with a front sagging down into parts of the northern and north central US. That includes zones like the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. These zones will have the potential for day time heating to induce severe weather. Some of that could even continue into the night along with a chance for isolated flooding. We'll see similar risks sprout up over similar areas as the front lingers around into Sunday. The eastern part of that front, though, is going to be in association with the jet stream energy that's actually going to help in pushing air in offshore. So, as you get your thunderstorms in a place like New Jersey as we go out of Sunday into Monday, definitely actually be thanking the front for bringing you that rain because it's helping in pushing the bigger threat out to sea. We'll get some new low pressure trying to move in from the west and rejuvenate the front as we go beyond Monday night and then towards Tuesday and Wednesday. That's going to help in elevating storm coverage anywhere from the Central Plains to the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic for the midweek time frame. In terms of temperatures, this trend graphic I've made and talking about at the end of this weekend and particularly into next week indicates how warm temperatures are expected to be in comparison to average over a lot of the country. One of the only zones that's going to see cooler than average temperatures will be out west. Then there will also be the northeastern U.S. where we will see that slight dip in the jet stream and associated front, helping to not only cool temperatures, but also force Aaron away from the coast and out to sea. With that being said, that's all I got for this update. Make sure hitting that like button, sharing the update, stay tuned for the next one. God bless you. One Nation Web.